Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Nick and I'll be going over your very first manual lathe tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be going over what a manual lathe does and what it's used for. I'm also going to be going over the various parts that you see in front of you, what their names are. I'm not going to be going over into super detail of how to position these levers and all of that, all of those things, but I will be telling you what they are used for. Without any further ado, let's jump in this thing. Okay, a lathe operates on the principle of a workpiece rotating inside of the spindle up against the edge of a cutting tool. And with this cutting tool, it can travel in two different axes. It can travel in X, which is front to back, which is gonna be your diameter. And it travels in left to right, which is gonna be your Z axis. Okay, so X and Z, those are your two axes for the lathe. All right, right, I have some note cards here to make sure I don't forget anything because this is a very dangerous machine and I wanna make sure to tell you guys everything before we jump in the next following videos. All right, there is a vocabulary word called a swing. Now the swing means that if you put a, if somebody says that a lathe has the swing of 12 inches, that means that the biggest piece of material that they can fit in this lathe is gonna be a 12 inch diameter without hitting your ways. And what your ways are is these flat ground surfaces, flatter V-shaped ground surfaces that the carriage rides along. And you'll see the ways located here and here. The carriage is this entire assembly that you see riding along the ways. Now the bed length is gonna be the length of the ways. All right, so this right here is your headstock and it contains your spindle. And on the headstock, you'll see a table right here. I can't really, you might not be able to read it from that far away, but it's just different numbers like 1500, 500, 160, and 54. And this chart is just telling you how to position these top levers to get the spindle speed that you want. Right below that is your gearbox. Your gearbox is basically the same thing as telling you how to position these levers to get the ratio of gears to control these two shafts. The top shaft, which let me scoot down, that way you guys can see that, is your lead screw. And that's used for threading. Right below that is your power feed shaft, and that's used for power feeding which I would not suggest when you first start learning a lathe to use power feed, which I'm gonna show you guys how to do in the next couple videos. I would say get used to working the handles, but what power feed is, is these two handles, which is gonna be X and Z, instead of cranking it by hand, you can position these levers and turn on the power feed, which is gonna crank it for you, basically. All right, right here on top of your carriage is your tool post. And the tool post contains different tools. You can put part off tools, boring bars, and finishers, roughers, and we're gonna be going over which tools you can use inside of a lathe. And right over here is gonna be your tail body. Your tail body is used for long pieces of material. You can put a center in it, and this is a center. It's kind of shaped like a cone on the end. Let me go ahead and take it out. That way you guys can get a better visual. This is a center, and what you do with the center is you take a long piece of material, center drill the end, hang out the piece of material, put the live center, which it spins, and you put it inside that center drilled hole, and you can cut a long piece of material without it waving around. Now, you can also use the tail body to put drill chucks in, large spade tools in, so if you got a big hole, you put a spade uh, drill in. You can also um, tap in it and ream and all that fun stuff. You want to make sure to keep it clean. Now whenever you crank out the tail body, you'll see this shaft come out that's called your ram. And on the back of your tail body, you're going to have two different locks. You got your ram lock, which locks the ram, and you have your tail body lock, which locks the tail body to the ways. All right, when it comes to a lathe, you want to make sure before you start operating this machine that everything is cleaned off. So you want to make sure to clean all the chips, clean everything. You want to make sure before you put on a chuck or a collet or anything like that to make sure to clean. You also want to clean your lead screw. You can get a thread and turn this on, which I'm going to show you how to do. Turn that on and make sure to clean this or you can use a brush. And then after it's clean, you want to be sure to lube it. You can lube the ways and also the cross feed. Right here, you can see we have wired in a DRO. I would highly suggest getting one. 
especially if you use your lathe every day, it is very, very useful instead of putting up a travel indicator and bumping up against it or using your dials. This can go within a few tenths. So it is very important that if you do use a lathe every day, it may cost a little money at the beginning, but in the long run, it'll save you money. Now, I have a few rules I would like to, I kind of made them up myself, but it makes sense for the most part. Before you actually start running apart, you want to make sure that you're clean, you're lubed up, and you're good to go. And you want to be sure that your tool post is secure. You want to make sure that it's not hanging out further than it has to be. So if all you need is just an inch hanging out, then just hang out an inch. Don't hang out any more than that. You want to be sure that your workpiece is secure. If it's not secure, it could fly out and hurt somebody. And you also want to be safe because I know you guys might hear that a lot, especially watching machining and being into machining, but everything on a lathe is in your face. You got chips flying at you. You've got a nest of chips right here. When the lathe whips around, it can grab that nest of chips, whip it in your face. This is a very dangerous machine. So I'm gonna be going over safety precautions, show you guys even how to make a shield to protect your face. And that way you don't have to sit here and hold it. I'll show you how you can mount it on your machine. Your machine may be a little different, but all lathes in general are the same. Now you also want to look at the sharpness of your tool and the size of cut that you're roughing with. Some people take 20 thou roughing, which is ridiculous as a little amount. You can take 200, 250 thou aside. You want to be sure that not to use a finisher to rough and use a rougher to rough and a finisher to finish. And besides that, the only other thing I would like to talk about is what you can put inside of your spindle. There are things called chucks that have jaws, which I'm gonna go ahead and grab, I'll be right back. Okay, so this is a chuck, this is a four jaw chuck. Each jaw on this moves individually, meaning that you put your uh, chuck key right in here, right in there, and you can move each jaw independently. Now, you can, let me put this down. You can have three jaw chucks which move universally with each other, so you just put your chuck key in one spot, and as you crank it, all three jaw moves. Same for the six jaw chuck, which is what I have right now. You can move that universally. Uh, you can also put collet holders in, so they have things like uh, 5C collet holders, and as long as it fits your taper and things like that. You have Jacob's chucks and face plates. And we're gonna show you guys how to use each one of those in the future videos. But for now, that is the very intro to the lathe. The only other thing I forgot is the bedpan. It collects chips. All right, so thank you very much. And we will get going in the next few videos, going into more detail what you can do on this baby. All right, thank you.